Hey friends, I got a question for ya. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Or is it Harold the Helicopter? Yes, today we're going to be talking about our favorite whirly bird friend right here. And I also have some other versions of Harold that I'm going to show off in wooden railway form. So stick around, we're going to go through all the versions. But first off, let's start with the very first version of Harold that was produced. And for those who don't know, Harold was a railway series character. He made the transition over to the TV series. And I'd say ever since the, C uh, the CGI switchover about 10 years ago, Harold has actually become a very consistent character in Thomas and Friends. I think probably the reasoning behind that is that he went from this annoying flopper chopper guy on Thomas's branch line to a very important member of the search and rescue center um, when the CGI switchover was made. So that just allows for more opportunities for Harold to be seen. And along with those opportunities come more merchandise opportunities. And I'm not even talking about just the wooden railway range. I'm talking about everything. I mean, I'm, I'm actually very surprised as to how much merchandise Harold gets because I'll be honest with you guys, Harold is not really one of my favorite characters. I'm flabbergasted that every time the Diecast Portable merchandise range is rebooted and reintroduced, the first piece of merchandise we get is Harold. You take a look at Take and Play Harold and Adventures Harold and Push Along Harold, it's the exact same toy over and over again, and I really think that's just cheap because I, I you know Harold's he's one of the staple characters of the series but I don't think he's all that popular and I've never really liked Harold and maybe my best reasoning behind that is that this is the Harold that I grew up with as a kid and used in my series for a number of years and as you can tell it's in really good condition there's hardly any nicks or scratches on this thing and probably when I was a kid I didn't think Harold was that cool of a character and still don't honestly I mean it's kind of cool just to sit him off to the side there in a field or whatever but in terms of including him in a major story or something like that, I feel like it's pretty limited. But anyway, about Harold's wooden railway model right here, this is what Harold looked like for like 15 years in the Thomas Wooden Railway range. He was one of those characters, kind of like Mavis, who as the series changed and evolved, his wooden railway merchandise really didn't do anything. I mean, this is what Harold looked like for a good 15 years. The only major change from my version that's from the late 90s is that in the early 90s, when he was introduced. We'll call it this plastic base right here, which Harold uses to land when he makes a touchdown. It used to be made out of wood, and then a couple years after he was introduced, it transitioned to plastic, and that's the one that I, uh, that I have here. And it may be hard to see with the lighting, but um, it has actually suffered some sun damage. It's tinted a little bit yellow, but uh, it makes sense. I was a kid and probably did leave my toys in the sun uh, once in a while. But Harold here, I think he has a pretty good shape, and that's one thing we're going to talk about. Harold's shape uh, changes quite a bit as his merchandise evolves or devolves, depending on how you think things are going. Um, but actually, Harold has a has a lot of plastic. Um, this main, what I'll call maybe submarine body right here with his name and his windows, this is wood, but then the propellers up here, his rotors, his tail section is plastic, the rotors are plastic, and of course we talked about the plastic base. So for being introduced in the early 90s, when, you know, a great detail and attention was taken to make these uh, characters out of as much wood as possible, Harold was always kind of an outlier because he did feature a lot of plastic. However, I think it is done tastefully, and I'd say this tail section is pretty hard to get in wooden form, but as you guys are going to see later, there is a version or versions of Harold where this is actually made out of wood. So anyway, this is what Harold looked like for a number of years. I really do think of this version of Harold as the quintessential version, just because he was uh, existed like this for so long. But take a look as to um, what Harold's name looks like. Take a look at his expression. And also note the color of his propellers up here, or his rotors, and the color of his windows. Because as we move down the line, you're going to notice that some things change. There was a special version of Harold that was introduced around 2004, 2000. And this version of Harold lasted until like 2009 or 2010. So this special version was included in a set, I believe it was called the Harold's Mail Delivery Set. 
And it was a set that featured Thomas and maybe, I'm guessing, a, like a mail station, a mail depot. But this version of Herald was our first, I guess, kind of break from the stock standard Herald we have here. The shape is really, really similar. The face, the expression is a tiny bit different. It's the same overall idea, but it has changed a little bit. And notice the windows. We've gone uh, from mostly all black windows, actually, to mostly gray windows or about a 50-50 split there. We also have far more detailing on the side here, and Harold's name is a little bit more bolded than it used to be. But the big thing that sets this Harold apart is when we look underneath, we have a magnet. And what this actually works as Depending on which way you turn his rotors up top, the magnet is connected to a string, and I'm just going to do this to save some time, but if you pull on it, watch the rotors spin, if I can get my hands out of the way. This string uh, lets the magnet come down, and I'll actually move up the camera for this so that we can try to get as best of a view as we can. Basically, it's kind of like a, a herald on a drawstring almost, and this allows herald to pick up packages or anything magnetic, in fact. It's actually a very cool idea. Unfortunately, I mean, that's it's a very long string. I'd say close to maybe eight inches or so. Um, so you got a fair amount of length right there. Um, and it's just a very creative idea, and it's all linked to the way Harold's propeller turns, so I believe I'm turning it in the right way. Yes, you guys can start to see it coming in. You do have to turn it quite a bit, though, but it is a really smart way to make this toy more interactive. And you guys are probably wondering, well, since it's magnetic, can it carry, you know, pieces of cargo or anything like that? And my answer is yes, we are going to take a look at that later in the video. But I wanted to show off kind of this special version of Harold. Um, it's a little bit hard to find, but it's actually more common than you would think. Um, and I think it's pretty cool, and I do think it is an upgraded version of this Herald. I do like the different colored windows and the more detailing, and the magnet on the bottom, you don't even have to use the magnet if you don't want to. It just kind of sits under there and really doesn't get in your way until you're ready to use it. So this version of Herald was only sold in a set. Apparently, according to the internet, this was sold individually for just a tiny bit. I don't ever remember seeing it sold like that. However, I only remember seeing it in this one set. So we had this version of Herald for only like a year or two. Then we went back to this version of Herald around 2009 until about 2009 or 2010. And then we have a new version of Herald that comes in. And this is the one that I currently use in my series because I do believe it is kind of like a good, I guess, middle ground in terms of the pieces being used and what Herald looks like. However, it does differ substantially from the previous version. So this version was released around 2011, 2012. I'll just kind of, it was basically like the CGI version of Harold, basically. We had all those CGI Tomy engines come in around the same time, and that's kind of what this Harold is. We still have a fair amount of plastic. Notice that the rotors up top now have these red uh, pieces. The old ones did not have that. Harold's face has changed dramatically. Instead of being printed on a piece of wood like we see back here, it is now its own plastic separate piece. And on the side here, uh, we do see you know, some really nice uh, lining up with the red detailing on the left side of Harold, but then on the right side of Harold, it completely falls apart. So that's one of the problems that you have when you try to link these detailing uh, designs over several pieces. So the rotor area up here is all plastic. Uh, the face is plastic, the landing gear is still plastic, and then actually a little bit more of the tail area is plastic. So that's probably one of the downsides here is that we have a fair bit amount more of plastic being used, but I think it's used very tastefully. We get more details like the tail rotor back here. The windows have been elevated somewhat, and honestly, I just think this is what Harold looks like more so in the TV series, and even dating back to the model series, this is what he looked like compared to the wooden versions back here. These were good versions. They were very quintessential learning curve items, but in my opinion, this is what Harold looks like in the TV series nowadays and even before uh, the CGI switchover. So overall, I think this version of Harold is pretty good. I just think Harold does not have the best face across all of his different versions of wooden railway merchandise. And even in the TV series, he just 
doesn't very it doesn't have a very likable face. So trying to find trying to pick out my favorite Harold face is kind of like picking my own poison. I'm, I'm not going to end up happy, that's for sure. So that lasted about two years, and then when Fisher Price and Mattel took over the range, they introduced a very similar looking Harold. I actually think it has a tiny bit less plastic. However, however. The big major problem with this Herald, in my opinion, is the face. I just talked about how I'm not a big fan of all the Herald faces. Well, I'm especially not a big fan of this one. Um, this doesn't look like Herald um, <laughs> in the TV series, and that face especially doesn't look like Herald. I feel like we've kind of regressed, in a fact. I'm going to bring up this version of Herald right here. Not only is it a tiny bit smaller, but you know, the plastic round detailing that we were looking at earlier and these other details, um, unfortunately, I just think it's kind of a step backwards a little bit. Um, I think it, it was good effort um, and it definitely made Fisher Price and Mattel's version of Harold different from the learning curve Tomy version, but I still just don't think that these are, that this right here is a very good version of Harold. The lining is a lot better because we've actually reduced the number of different pieces needed to assemble Harold, if that makes sense, but I cannot get over this face. I, I just really do not like that face at all, uh, unfortunately. I will mention in the back here, Harold, since he is at the search and rescue center he has a spotlight on the bottom there which is just kind of this plastic part and it's also plastic here on the Mattel version but it's not it's not colored in anymore so you have to kind of go searching for it one of the things I will mention though with the Fisher Price version is that we do have the return of the magnet underneath the Tomy uh, learning curve version does not have that but the magnet on Harold comes back and I think this is a good um, kind of play situation because since Harold, you know, is, he's a rescue helicopter, I think he's still almost a normal helicopter in the TV series. Um, you know, this, this adds a lot of playability and I am, at the end of this video, I am going to test um, how well the helicopters, uh, all versions of Harold are able to carry packages and maybe even an engine or two. So, there are some nice qualities with Harold here. I think that one of the bigger changes I didn't mention was that this is all one wood body now. Whereas in the previous version up here, this was plastic and really there was a very limited amount of wood on this item, but I still think it was used uh, pretty well. We've gone back to more wood uh, with this uh, version of Harold, but at what cost? I just think he looks super blocky. And I think Mattel for the most part did an excellent job with all of their 2013 versions of the engines and rolling stock and you know other vehicles but the one item they really didn't do a good job on was Harold right here he's probably one of my least favorite Thomas Wooden Railway models however I got a surprise for you guys the story doesn't stop there we're gonna bring in this version of Harold which is definitely one of the worst one of the worst Thomas and Friends wood items um, if there was ever a character whose lack of paint is more apparent, it would be Harold the Helicopter here. Um, this, unfortunately, is just, just not good. What's crazy, though, is that this actually has the most amount of wood um, of any Harold that we're going to take a look at, minus its successor here in just a moment. This whole main body right here, even this plastic, what used to be a plastic back part where the, the tail rotor was, that is, uh, that is all wood, so the main wood body, I'll even call it a submarine again, this is all wood. That's pretty impressive. The only pieces of plastic that I see here are, once again, this base, the landing gear, and the propeller up top. So, I'll tell you what, that can, that can be admired. That's a pretty good addition. However, I mean, this front area here is just, just horrible. It is, I mean, there, I, I have no... I cannot defend a lot, ma the majority of Thomas Wood products, and this is definitely one of them. A lot of engines suffer because of the loss of paint in pivotal areas. I mean, look at, I mean, this is just terrible. Uh, I mean, especially the back here. I mean, it, it, is, it is just, just awful. And unfortunately, I, I can't believe this was a reality for a while. Harold has seen better days, let's say that. And I don't think, Maybe I think his expression has improved just a tiny bit, in my opinion, but it's still not great. Um, I do really approve of that separate plastic face back there, just because I think it gets the finer details. You can see him a little bit better. 
Uh, but we do have a magnet underneath, and what you guys are going to see in a little bit is that this magnet is actually fairly strong. However, the rest of Herald is pure junk. It, it's just awful. I, I, <laughs> I really don't know what else to say. Um, yeah, it's just bad. However, however, when the wood items did become painted after those dark years, and I think we're still in the dark years, Harold does look much better. We are still missing detailing. Where all that blank wood used to be, there's nothing there. So I would like to see some detailing, but you know, this, this white paint is better than the exposed wood, which we were subjected to for a very long time. The problem with this Herald is that it stays fairly chunky throughout the entire model, and that's not the case. Harold kind of starts out chunky around his cab cockpit area, but as you work your way backwards, it should slim up because you don't see helicopters looking this chunky. The problem that this wood version faces, although this is entirely wood, um, you miss out on that detail and it just becomes a very heavy, very tall version of Harold. I will bring height into this. Um, yes, it is very tall, and I'd say the, the Mattel version is definitely the smallest. So look at the height difference we see here. If it'll, It's focusing on Harold in the back there. I want it to focus on these guys right up front here. Look at the height difference there. Um, I would say in comparison to an engine, I do have Thomas sitting here. I've always, I'm not really sure on what Harold's exact size is supposed to be. Maybe this is more accurate because Harold's a pretty big helicopter, but he just looks out of place in my opinion. He looks way too big and just way too weird. Um, we're also missing a very important feature. We're also missing the spotlight, which was introduced back with these two versions. That's now gone, but we still do have the magnet underneath. So those are all the versions, the main versions of Harold that I could come up with. Um, I'm going to bring in some cargo pieces here in just a second. And I actually have two different versions we want to try out. We have a big cargo piece, and then we have a tiny cargo piece. Now, the first version of Harold, and actually the third version as well, are excluded from this contest because, well, they don't have a magnet underneath. So this guy and this guy, we can't really do a whole lot. However, I'm going to bring uh, in this like 2004 Harold with the magnet, and what you guys are going to see... I'm going to spin them upside down and pull them really fast so we get the magnet free flowing. What you guys are seeing is that this magnet is not strong at all. I don't know if it's because um, this toy is like 15 years old at this point, but it doesn't do a terrible job. It's more apparent. I wish it, I'm going to have it focus on the piece of cargo here. Um, it's more apparent with this heavier piece of cargo. You can see it make contact. I mean, you can see there is a connection, but unless I'm really gentle with it, it doesn't connect. With the smaller piece here, um, since it is a lighter weight, it does connect a lot easier, but it's still a very weak connection. I'm also going to bring in, for some fun, I'm going to bring in Thomas, because why not? He's got some magnets. And guys, look at this. I'm going to flip him around. Okay. You know, the, the main, the main <laughs> magnet connection area is right here, and it is non-existent. It, is, it just does not exist. So unfortunately, and I don't know if this is the way this Herald was designed, or if it's just, you know, the strength has faded in recent years, but I just thought that was very interesting to show off that that Herald, although it is very cool because, because it has kind of a retractable magnet, um, the connection is not very strong at all. Let's bring in 2013 Herald. Pretty strong, pretty strong. I mean, I have to shake the, I have to shake these cargo pieces decently hard to get them to uh, leave Harold's base there. And as a kid, you know, you're gonna roughhouse Harold and everything, and it's a, it's a pretty good connection. I mean, look at that. That's pretty good, honestly. And then the, the wood and the painted wood, they should be about the same. However, I will say that they have the strongest uh, connection, the strongest magnet out of all the Heralds we're taking a look at right here. Um, what's interesting, though, is as you can see there, Harold's um, base, his plastic base, kind of gets in the way sometimes when you go to pick something up. So it does depend on how you pick up your cargo. And, and you know, the base, or excuse me, the, uh, the magnet um, polarity here is still the same. Um, with the painted uh, wood herald compared to the unpainted wood herald, but I just wanted to show it off there. So the winners, if we can call this like an unofficial contest, the winners of the strength magnet competition are actually the Thomas Wood uh, versions. The Fisher-Price Mattel version right here does a pretty good job. 
um, but it's still not as strong as the wood versions and it's definitely way stronger than that one. I forgot to bring in actually Thomas for the other two. Um, and as you can see there, it takes a little bit of uh, maneuvering to get them hooked up. But uh, I'm t I trust you guys, I'm pulling very hard on the magnets here. Um, there's a nice strong connection there and an even stronger connection here. So that's, that's something to be proud of. If you're going to have kind of this magnet on the bottom and you're gonna do something like that, um, you might as well do it well. So I think that's gonna wrap up my thoughts on Harold. We got you know pretty much six different versions. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm actually amazed at all the different versions of Harold that there are because I just do not find Harold to be the most interesting character. I'm glad he exists, but beyond that, it's kind of like, okay, he's a helicopter, he's there. He can't pull trains, you know, when you think of the Thomas Wooden Railway line, it's all geared towards the trains. You know, Mattel, or excuse me, Learning Curve pushed really hard for a number of years to get the roadway thing to catch on and it never did catch on and I'd say, Harold was kind of a main character. Like I unboxed the uh, the hospital destination. He was included in a number of different things and it just never really caught on. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you guys like Harold as a character and which version of Harold do you like best? Um, I've kind of made my thoughts pretty clear. I like this version of Harold. Um, I think he's kind of the best well-rounded version. My only critique is that, you know, a magnet underneath wouldn't be so bad. I probably wouldn't use it in my series but there's definitely space for a magnet. It's just kind of an open area underneath there. Um, and I wish the lining um, was a little bit more accurate. You know, it definitely on this one side, you know, you can definitely tell that we're dealing with separate pieces of plastic there. Uh, but yeah, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Harold has gone through some major changes in recent years. We had this version of Harold for like 15 years and this guy for one and this guy for two and this guy for three or four and this guy for one and who knows how long this version of Harold is going to last. So in a very short period of time, we have gone through a couple different versions of Harold, but hopefully I've done a good enough job to um, kind of show you guys all the differences and the similarities. Harold's name has changed on the side. His uh, plastic rotors, propellers up top have changed color and size and dimensions um, but overall we got a very nice uh, selection and variety of Harold models in front of you here so guys I want to thank you all so much for watching this Thomas Wooden Railway discussion be sure to leave your thoughts and comments below and I'll see you all on my next video